Good evening, church. Good evening, brethren. Welcome to Bergen Bible Baptist Church in our last prayer meeting for the month of March. This is the last day also, and also the celebration anniversary of Brother Jackson and Sister Karen. Happy, happy anniversary today. Okay, 31. So how God's people this day, this evening? Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for our audience here and also um, for our brethren who are in their respective houses uh, tuning in in our service kamusta po sa bawat isa and uh, brethren in the Philippines uh, welcome to our Wednesday prayer meeting so as we always do uh, we have some praises or singing songs for the Lord we have some songs here and let's sing the first song glory to his name in the way of our preparation for the preaching of the Word of God. Glory to His name. Okay, on the first now, Down at the cross where my Savior died, Down here for cleansing, for sin I cry, There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life, glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides with him There at the cross where he took me in Glory to his name Glory to his name Glory to his name There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to the blood of life. Glory to His name. Amen. Glory to His name. All right. Our service is to glorify our Savior, the name of our God. Amen. So let's um, sing another song at Calvary. We know this is a Passion Week and it's all about the cross. It's all about Calvary. Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died for us and risen again from the grave. So let's sing at Calvary. And after this, I would like to request Brother Lino to open us in a word of prayer. Okay. So on the first stanza, now years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing that it was for me, he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdens over me burden at Calvary. As my sin I learned Then I trembled at the low I spurned Till my guilty soul imploring turned To Calvary Mercy there was great and grace was free Pardon there was multiplied to me Salvation. 
creation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty God that God did span. the word Calvary, we can relate to that mercy was great and His grace was free. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So brother, do you know please uh, pray for our So thank you, Brother Lino, for that prayer. You may now be seated in our audience here, and let's sing another song. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. If you have a burden, if you are, have um, things to do, let's see the burdens that was carried by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he knows our burden too. Okay, so let's sing. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Okay, on the first snap. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and weary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus very prayer away from us. Amen? So, he's very near to us. Okay, so, let's have our um, praises and prayer requests tonight. And thank God for our members who are um, asking prayers and commented for our um, 
list here and also for the praises that God has given us for answering our prayers. Praise the Lord for that. So let's have our praise first or praises first. Um, first of all, uh, from Mrs. Josie Mendoza, Sister Josie. Um, praise God for Pastor Smack's blood sugar getting better. Amen. Thanks for prayers. So thank the Lord for that. And let's continue to pray for our brethren. And also another praises here from Sister Aimee Libioko. Um, God answered our prayers. Amen. To our BBBC brethren, we would like to thank you for your prayers and support to my children who were tested positive. Debbie, Ruth, Eunice, my daughters, and Ian, Ian, my son-in-law, my granddaughters, Chloe, three-year-old, and PB, six months old, um, all at the same time. They live in Pompton, Pompton Plains, New Jersey. And thank the Lord for answering our prayers and thank the Lord for healing mercy to this family. And also another here, um, thank you to those who, who gave home cooked foods and Jollibee during those days. I cannot express the concern and worries in my heart being miles away as a mother for their recovery and their daily food since they all feel so weak with body pains, fever, colds, and cough. The Lord taught us, all of us lessons on the area of trusting Him during those days. Last Saturday, they were all tested and it's now negative. Thank you so much for your prayers and for bringing those yummy food which provided so much joy. May God continue to bless BBBC. Thank you for your love in action with our prayers for you all. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. To God be the glory. So, praise the Lord for that athlete, Sister Aimee. And also here, a praises. Thank the Lord for another year of life that God has given to these people. Uh, tomorrow, the birthday of Sister Risa May. Amen. April the 1st. And Brother Christian Ace Barbarona tomorrow also. And also Zion Joseph Del Mar on the 2nd, April 2nd. So happy, happy birthday to our celebrants. And also uh, anniversary, okay, um, congratulations to Sister Karen and Brother Jackson. This, today is their wedding anniversary. Praise God for, for the years that God has given to their relationship. And let's continue to pray for them, amen. And also um, here are requests. Prayer request tonight. Uh, please include in your prayers Pastor Robert and Sister Joy Benyalweba. They got COVID. Uh, let's pray for strength and complete healing to them. Okay? And let's pray also for uh, Erlinda Kasahe, Sister Angie's mom, who tested positive for COVID at 76 years old living by herself in the Philippines. So let's pray for her. Okay, Arlinda Kasahe. Okay, for strength and healing mercy. And also another request from Sister Malu Minano. Please continue to pray for Tatay Priscilla Gamutin. He was discharged last Monday for, from hospital and will decide if he will get chemotherapy. Please pray for his strength and protection in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's pray for Tate Priscilla. And another request here from Sister Joanne Batong. Please pray for Bilma Pardo Kari, sister of, of the Vice Mayor Dindo Pardo of Labo, Camarines Ka Norte. She is the Filipina victim of hate crime in New York that happened the other day. She is a relative of a friend, Cory Tyree. Thank you, brethren. And also, God's protection and safety to Asians from hate crimes. So we are included to these Asians. So let's pray for God's protection to us. Okay, so also another request here from Sister Judith. 
Sister Judith Rojo, uh, please pray for my co-worker Liz regarding her surgery for sarcoma and my co-worker, other, other co-worker Lauren who might have a multiple uh, cellulosis. Okay, so COVID number went up in my hospital despite the vaccine. So let's continue to... COVID cases, okay? So let's pray for our, um, our community and also our country. All right? So let's pray also for this. Um, NCLEX review of Sister Kim Minano and Sister Hazel Manalo. Safe pregnancy of Sister Jay Manalo. And upcoming wedding of Sister Robin and Brother Gilbert. And also the brethren who are getting their vaccination. Please include uh, Pastor Abelardo for his second dose of vaccine on April uh, 15. Okay, April 15. Okay, so um, let's pray for them. Okay, so another list here. God's healing mercies and good health and God's provision. Let's pray for Pastor Narge and Sister um, Christina Maliari. They have uh, COVID also. And Sister Ruth Tulabot, they have COVID. And Sister Erica, I think uh, Sister Erica is uh, uh, feeling well right now, doing well. Thank you for your prayers. But let's pray continually to um, Brother Roel, okay? Uh, COVID and protection also for all the spouses. And let's pray for Sister Paz Norella, complete recovery and health. And Sister Luming uh, Tolentino for recovery. And thank God we saw her last uh, fellowship, isn't it? Okay, for the ladies' fellowship. Okay, praise the Lord for that. And also, let's pray continually for Brother Christian, his therapy, and Sister Silin from the sprained knee. And they, then they would like to praise God for continuous healing to them. Amen. And also, let's pray for Nanay Naomi or Bistondo dialysis and her health sister Amia for complete healing and brother Manding for strength sister Mary Ann Rebilla and brother Hector De Castro Edward K Maria Sambengo Dr. Myron and Mrs. Geiler and sister Shirley Rowell uh, please pray for sister Shirley she is in the hospital right now um, she will uh, go to a procedure for her thyroid and little int intestine so let's do pray for um, healing mercy as well, okay? And also, let's pray for our unsaved loved ones, families and friends, and all the missionaries and pastors, um, spiritual frontliners, okay, that we have. And also pray for our um, frontliners and their families, okay, 37 from our church, and our Good Friday service, okay, and Easter Sunday this weekend. So, do we have more requests here? All right, these are the comments from Sister Amayat. Her request for healing mercy, Roel is still in the hospital since Friday. So, let's continue to pray for Roel. And from Sister Edita Gito, um, prayer request for my job. Okay, so let's uh, include her in our um, prayer. Okay, so is there any more from our comment section? So thank, thank you for commenting and thank you for updating us regarding your um, request. Okay, so at this time, let's um, have a um, moment of prayer. Okay, after the song, we will close this prayer time. Okay, so let's pray.
Let's pray. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this prayer time. Thank you, Lord, for the prayer requests and praises, Lord, that your people um, gave tonight, Lord. Thank you for who you are in our lives. You are the powerful God. Um, we know, Lord, that you know our needs, our desires, and I pray, Lord, that you continue to bless these prayers, Lord, and continue to um, be with our people or our brethren who are not feeling well. We would like to ask, oh Lord, for your healing mercy to them. Um, bless them, O oh Lord, and continue to guide them, O oh Lord God, in their lives. And thank you, Lord, for this time that we can pray, even though that we are not um, in person or here inside the church, all of us, but virtually we can um, be in spirit, O oh Lord, uh, communicating, O oh Lord God, to you. And we know, O oh Lord, that you are a God who can hear our prayers. And thank you, Lord, for uh, your power. Your grace is always abounding. Your mercy endureth forever. And bless your people. Bless our service tonight, O oh Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. So thank you, brethren. Thank you, folks, for your prayers and for your time. And at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Pastor Sam to please come to give us the announcement. Thank you. Amen. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Good evening or good day, wherever you are, whatever applies to you. Uh, welcome to our uh, prayer meeting uh, for tonight, uh, the 5th. Wednesday of the month of March and the last day also. So we praise and thank God for another day of life He has given to us. And uh, it's kind of rainy tonight, but we believe there is a showers of spiritual blessing in store for us from the Word of God. And um, for quick announcements, uh, this coming Friday will be our Good Friday service starting at 7.30 p.m. Take note and... Uh, our choir also will be here, so please come earlier than that. And we'll be hearing uh, the seven last sayings or utterances of Christ by our um, men in the church. Uh, first saying is Brother Alex, Brother Heckler, the second saying, Brother Jackson, the third saying, Brother Julius uh, Matias, our former missionary from the Philippines in Manila, the fourth, Brother Joe, one of our seniors, the fifth saying, and Brother Reno, uh, the sixth saying, and last but not the least, Brother Christian Ali Lams on the seventh saying. So looking forward to that, and let's continue to pray for them. Join us in our prayer covenant every 3 p.m. daily until Friday uh, that the Lord will use them mightily, give them uh, continuous good health, and continue to protect them. And looking forward for a great time of uh, commemorating the sufferings of Christ, His passion for us, and his love for us demonstrated on the cross. So uh, please share, and let's be excited of this wonderful event. And then the coming Saturday will be our 54th week prayer chain ministry, April the 3rd. So once again, please join us as we take an hour uh, to, to pray and read God's word and reflect on the goodness of the Lord and um, just pray to a, a lot of things that we need to pray for. All right, then Easter Sunday and Cantara, April the 4th, uh, will be starting at 10 o'clock, and it's going to be one service only, no Sunday school in the afternoon, and we'll be having a um, special guest speaker and our 100 voice choir, virtual Cantara choir, and also our, some songs that will be sung by our own uh, choir uh, members here in the church, and um Three other churches in the Philippines are joining us during that time as we collaborate with them. So let's be excited and pray about this and that the Lord will speak to us in a special way, save souls, and revive our hearts. So please take note of that. And after that uh, service, we'll also be having our Lord's Table uh, service um, this coming Sunday and the officers' quarterly meeting after lunch, somewhere in the afternoon. So please take note of that. So tonight, without uh, further ado, uh, before we call our special music, also if you'd like to um, get the elements for our Lord's table uh, this coming Sunday, we have some available here in the church. You can pick it up. Just let us know, message us, 
and we'll be more than happy to to give it to you so you can participate and be able to um, celebrate with us as we commemorate the Lord's Supper. So we have the elements here in the church or in the parsonage, let us know. So tonight, uh, before we uh, introduce our speaker, we have a special music from one of our dear friends, uh, former MBC student, and is ministering in the in Baguio with Pastor Miles. So let me, uh, let's have Pastor Aaron Deason to give a special music tonight before the message of Pastor Leo. Amen. That was a blessing. It is great to hear Brother Aaron sing for the glory of the Lord once again. Are you thankful that Christ went all the way for uh, offering himself as a perfect and complete sacrifice for the remissions of our sins once and for all? And we are commemorating that. We are remembering that this week, especially this coming weekend as we celebrate his uh, resurrection and also his uh, passion, he 
his sufferings and crucifixion on the cross for our behalf. So we praise and thank God for ministering to us, Brother Aaron. Uh, always uh, be safe there, take care, and continue to pray for us here in Bergen Bible Baptist Church. Well, our speaker tonight is, um, is a good young man. I was able to meet him several times in my trip in the Philippines. He's a uh, fruit of uh, the ministry of Pastor Gideon Manalo, one of our previous missionaries before, and we praise and thank God for his heart to uh, um, win lost souls and reach out kids and adults alike to share the word of God, and we praise and thank God for his diligence and uh, the gifts and talents that the Lord has given him to continue to do the ministry that he has entrusted to him. And he's ministering in Barangay Kanumay, Valenzuela City, and Shield of Faith Baptist Mission. And once again, it's an honor and privilege for us to hear from God's servant for uh, tonight, for this hour. So let me introduce Pastor uh, Leo Naval, and he'll deliver the message tonight. Thank you. Uh, good evening to all of us. Uh, before we start, I'd like to take this moment to show my gratitude to all the Bergen Bible Baptist Church. Thank you so much and for your prayers and for the financial support you have given for the ministry of the Lord. Here at Shield of Faith Baptist Church, Barangay Kanuma is Valenzuela City. It was a big help to be a part of your ministry, uh, especially to Pastor Sam and, and his wife. Uh, Ma'am January, thank you so much. Pastor Gether, Ma'am Hazel, uh, thank you so much. And Tatay Abelardo, uh, we're praying for you for good health. Uh, thank you also to Pastor A. Pastor Abel, uh, though it is a short notice, but it's a privilege to preach the gospel and the word of God, and of course to the Bergen Bible Baptist Church. Thank you so much. Now let's open our Bible in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 through 31. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 through 31. The Bible says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common home and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they strike him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plotted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. Shall we pray? Dear God and precious in Heavenly Father, we thank you, loving God, for this moment as a privilege to share your word to the All Bergen Bible Baptist Church. I pray, Lord, help me to deliver your word clearly that we may bless in our life and challenge loving God, that we may grow in our spiritual life. We thank you, we honor you, we love you. All of the glory is back to you. In Jesus, in the precious name I pray. Amen. Now, the verse that we have read is when our Lord Jesus Christ was tortured before his crucifixion. I would like to bring you to this scene. On the first one, Matthew chapter 27, when morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. At that moment, he was already caught. He was not with the twelve disciples and the chief priests and the elders of the people wants to punish him with death because they believe he is blasphemous and claiming to be the son of God. This is a heavy reason why the chief priests and elders wants to punish him with death based on Mark chapter 14 verse 62 to 64. Please uh, bear with me. 
in the book of Mark chapter 14, uh, and Jesus said, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, coming in the clouds of heaven. Uh, and verse 63, uh, the chief said, we don't need witnesses. And 64, you have heard the blasphemy, what, what thing is? They all condemned to be guilty of death. But Pilate did not see Jesus as a sinner. He did not believe also the false accusations against the Lord Jesus. He is one of those who want to set Jesus, Jesus Christ free. Yet he can do nothing and follow the desire of the people saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. That's why in verse 28, we read, and they strike him. It is not just a strike and all done. They hit him with a whip that pierced even the flesh. That is why Isaiah described him, Isaiah described him in chapter 53, verse 2. When we shall see him, there is no duty that we should decide him. If we were there, uh, folks, when he was tortured, he will feel sorry for the appearance of our Lord Jesus. His whole body probably has had deep wound, but he endured all of this even though he was having a hard time because we love us so much. Amen. We love us so much. Before we proceed in our main outline, we will see how three things that the Lord Jesus Christ shown. First, he is willing to sacrifice his life. He is willing to sacrifice his life. No one teaches him to sacrifice his life. No one paid him to have money because he don't need it. And his parents did not told him to sacrifice his life. He is willing to sacrifice his life. For us to know, he wants to show his love. Second, he wants to show his love to the people who doesn't acknowledge him. That is why he endured all sufferings. Because he wants to show his greater love toward us sinners. Amen? Though you think or feel, don't see it. He keeps on showing and letting us to feel it. So despite of the hardship he went through, he did not fail. Because today we felt and seen he lived with us. Human God became incarnate to love us sinners. And the third, for the people to know, he is the son of the living God. Amen? He is the son of the living God. Many believe he is the son of God when the sky got dark before his final breath. Especially, they believe even more when he resurrected on the third day. He proud that he was the son of God. So we are believing, we accept him as a savior in our hearts. Is the son of God who lived as a human, who sacrificed his life, life, loved us to have a way for eternity. So we are grateful. We are grateful. We are saved. Amen. Because not everyone accepted our Lord. Right? Uh, God showed me three things in the sacrifice he made on the cross. God showed me three things in the sacrifice he made on the cross. First, his great compassion. This is the love of God. He did it because he had great love toward us. Amen. God gave mercy on us. First of all, when he was born here on earth, his purpose is already destined. The Bible says, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, what the Bible says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He did it because he has compassion toward us sinners. Because he knows when we born, when we born we will know other way or other teaching for him to be left unknown. That is why God the Son is willing to sacrifice his life for one day when he met us, accepted, accepted him as our personal Savior. His sacrifice is not in vain. His sacrifice is not in vain. Amen. Beloved, I have a question for you. What kind of life you probably 
had if you did not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you're successful, a degree holder, a talented, running a businesses, but all of these are just for a meantime. Most is important here is the life after our death. It is not common for people to talk about second life. If where his life will be after the life he have known, he have now. Are you are you one of the people that is not thinking about this thing? Uh, Pastor, I will not die any, anytime soon. I'm still strong. I still have a plans in my life. Who, who here among us has been in a cemetery? Here in the Philippines, we can see the grave of the disease. Iniisip ko po, ano eh, nilagay ko dito grave of the disease. Yung nicho, siguro po, papaliwanag na lang po nila yun. O yung mga ibang Pilipino po na nandiyan. We can see small and big ones. Or on the grave stone where the date of birth and death is stated. We can see there who died as young as one month old or even younger. Or even five years old or even a teenager. It is already a blessing if you reach 80 years old. Amen. So if you're not thinking about our second life, maybe it crosses in your mind right now where you will be after your life here on earth. So if there is someone here listening who doesn't know, he doesn't know yet the Lord Jesus, I would like to tell you, God sacrificed his life for you and for me because we're not capacitated to save ourselves. He has nailed on the cross to redeem us for our sins, to wash us, and if you believe he was nailed, died and resurrected, he will save you today. You will receive a gift of eternal life just like what we receive when we put our faith on Him. If you think you run out of hope in life, you're wrong. Because the Lord Jesus wants you to feel that there is a big hope on His side. Beloved, the Lord wants to encourage us with that we're going through. For the difficulties we're feeling, difficulties in life, sometimes due to this, we kept on thinking that it's not good. And sometimes it's it causes us to get to get away from Him. Lord, can I take a break, Lord? Lord, I'll be back when I'm, I'm already okay. Lord, I want to stop serving you. Listen, the sacrifices of the Lord is for you. So when we're weak, we look on Him, He will make us stronger. Like the Bible says, Hebrews, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame for the situation that we can hold on, any, on anymore. When we think to give up and say, Lord, I can anymore, he endured the cross, he endured the pain, he despised the shame, he endured all of this so when we get tired, We'll look unto him, remember the pain and suffering to inspire and to challenge us and have the strength to continue. Amen. The Lord Jesus is still thinking of the same. That's how precious his love is bring back the fire of our love on him. There is one reason for us not to see the love of the Lord Jesus. You know why? Sin. Yes. Because of the sin. Sin is the only reason for us not to see the love of Jesus. There are some mistakes that we do that we do intentionally. Sometimes we already know that it's a sin, and due to this, it covers slowly the love of God that He made for us. So while we're continuing to walk with sin. We cannot feel the love of God toward us no matter how big it is. This is why even the crucifixion, even his sacrifices, don't work anymore to us 
because of the sin. Isaiah 52 verse 2 uh, The Bible says, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Amen? If we have sin that becomes a hindrance for us not to see His love, let us ask for repentance. Sins that are keeping us away from His presence, since we commit intentionally, since that made our blind, let us ask for forgiveness for all of this, so that you and I can feel His love every day, and for us not to miss out His action in our life. The love of God, even we haven't known Him, it still showed Himself to us. Amen? Even we already know Him and stayed away from Him, He still shows us who He is. Because His suffering, aside from the sinner who doesn't know Him yet, it is also for the believers who accepted Him yet stayed away. So when we go back, He is still willing to accept us. This is the great compassion of the Lord Jesus. He gave mercy to all of us. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, accept Him today, right now. And if you are believers that are blinded by sin and can see His love, this is the right time to go back on His will. Thank you, Lord, because your mercy is upon us. If not this, we are lost. We are lost. Because we are sinners. The compassion of God is covered by His love. This is why we sinners still have chances. The love of God is like an ocean, overflowing and ending. Amen? Amen. His great compassion. Secondly, His great commission. His great commission. One reason why Jesus endured the suffering of the cross is to fulfill the Great Commission. If He wasn't nailed on the cross of Calvary, there would be no Great Commission, right? Annually, we celebrate Holy Week, the reason why we are having Sunday service, the reason why we put, we, the reason why we put up some programs like Easter Cantata, Anyway, thank you because we we were part of your Easter cantata. Thank you uh, for the Bergen Bible Baptist Church. Because of the Holy Week, we commemorate the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And His resurrection. And this is the moment to share the gospel because everyone is open-minded about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Here in the Philippines, when Holy Week approaches, when you ask people about Holy Week, they know what to answer. This is why this is the good timing to share the Gospel. Because the Gospel is death, burial, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we start to share it, we are performing, performing the Great Commission. Beloved, speaking of Great Commission, when was the last time you had the, you had the courage to share Jesus Christ? Because Great Commission is to spread the gospel. Of course, we are on lockdown. Ano? Due to the pandemic, uh, we are uh, easy to right now. Bawal lumabas, bawal lumabas. But the question is, where was the last time you shared the gospel of God? Some are people saying, we are overly spiritual. There's a right time for that, Pastor. To all my co-laborers in Christ, I salute those who still goes to share Christ to those unsaved, despite, despite of the threat due to the virus that is spreading. And for those who can go outside of their home, I know there are still things that God can use us. We see a lot of posts on social media. Sometimes they're their nonsense. Sometimes the things that we post online is not pleasing anymore. Why not grab this opportunity for those people who have plenty of time on Facebook, YouTube, Insta, and uh, Twitter to post on our social media wall to sharing the gospel observation. So there's still a way to share the gospel. 
Who knows? One of your hundred friends watch the gospel. The gospel you posted. Let's make a video about salvation. Upload it in YouTube. Every day, millions of people are watching on YouTube. You may not know it, but maybe there's one soul who got saved after finishing your videos. Pastors, uh, that's impossible. Listen, the gospel has the power. It is our responsibility to share the gospel to the unsaved ones. Whether it is in home or not via, li uh, via live streaming, as long as the people open their hearts and understood what they are hearing, he will be saved because the gospel has a power. We are obliged to do it because it's great commission. If you don't want to make his sa sa sacrifice, if you don't want to make his sacrifice on the cross being bail, let's do the great commission. Amen? Let's do the great commission. What can the gospel do to a person? First, because of the gospel, many people changed their life. Yes, because of the gospel, many people changed their life. Even you and I was changed by the Lord, by His grace. Because there is a power in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And He can change lives, those who accept it and follow His will. So if we have desire on how to change a person, it is to share the Lord Jesus Christ because there is a sure change on Him. Surprisingly, there's a lot of testimonies of previous drunkards, yet today was changed by the Lord. The vices, the vices of smoking, it was changed by the Lord. Previous drug addict, changed by the Lord. Previous gambler, changed by the Lord. Previous bad attitude, bad mouth, changed by the Lord. Previous wasted and has no future due to the bad, due to the bad influence friends, also was changed by the Lord. And all of this happened when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. He changed it into hope that a person can change if we are willing to accept Him because there's a power in the gospel. Even you and I change our life because of the gospel. To those who know the Lord, if we are looking for a way on how to change a person, the answer is let's share the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ endured the suffering of the cross is to fulfill the Great Commission. If we are totally saved, we will have the burden to share the gospel. Amen? We have the burden to share His gospel. Second, what does the gospel can do to a human's life? Change their way of living. Amen. Life is our life, our body, uh, our attitude. But the living, it's, it is our lifestyle. Who could have thought that there were people who are having a hard time in life, yet when they accepted the Lord Jesus, changed their lives, aside from that, the time has come, it has also changed the way of living. These testimonies, that, these testimonies that are like that, perhaps you, may, you might know a few, or maybe it is you who was changed by the Lord even the way of living. I believe that the Lord is rich. Amen. I hope we are also have the same belief. His rich is on the universe. He made the earth. He made the ocean and the mountains. And many more because the Lord that we are serving is rich. It is also desired to bless us, his son and daughters. What the Bible says, John chapter 10, verse 10. Please, uh, please read. The Bible says, I come that they might have life, and that they sorry. Sorry for the distraction. I come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The Lord Jesus also wants to give us an abundant life because He is rich. 
also in heaven, He built a mansion for us. I'm not telling to look after material things on the Lord when we accept Him. No. What I'm trying to say is this. When we continue to follow Him and prioritize Him in our lives, He won't forget to keep us last. Yet, He will prioritize us. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, But seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So a person who knew Jesus, their lives won't just be changed. Because we follow Him, no matter how heavy our feelings, His power, His power will reflect, reflect in our lives. Even so we don't speak and, and is kept quiet, other people can still see and say that we have a living God because of the gospel. Many people were blessed their living. The purpose of His suffering is to fulfill the Great Commission, to change our life and also to change our living. Thank you, Lord. Despite of His hardships, hurtings, wounds on His body, even at His death, He resurrected. Amen? Amen. There's a sense in our lecture. We were rich by what He had done. So we can only do for, do for Him is to share His words to those that, that are unsaved, to change their lives and to change their living. For the last, Amen. Last na po. His great companion. First, His great compassion. Secondly, His great commission. And the thirdly, His great companion. I could say in my life, Jesus is my great companion. Because the suffering, his pain on the cross, he endured and fought the pain. The moment he broke the cross, he did not give up. Though he fell down, he still chooses to stand up. Even in his, in his walk, he just stopped until it is already hard for him to breathe. Yet he, know, he knows that, it's not, that it is not yet to write the time to die. Even while he was kneeling by the soldiers, he could already die. Yet he knew that, it's not, that it is not yet the right time. He endured the pain. So we could say, he's our great companion. He never left us from that cross until now, nor forsaken us. For us to know, my son, whatever hardship we are, uh, I am here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you are a great companion. We are the fruit of His suffering. Actually, uh, it's all done. We have seen from His suffering His great compassion, His great commission and great companion. Before we end, I would like to share my short testimony to you. Amen. So, give me uh, 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 five minutes. Way back then, on my mom's side, my, uncle, my uncles were addicted to illegal drugs. And so, as a child, I did what they always saw. I copied them. I smoked and even used substances like marijuana. I saw drug too many times before, drinking liquor occasionally. I joined a gang when I was 12 or 13 years old. They even called me as a black sheep of the family. And also, I, I will always argued and fought with my father. Most of the time, I was involved in troubles and trials, which became the outlet of my hatreds to my parents. And also, I experienced being a thief, a snatcher. 
Ano ba yung snatcher sa inyo? Dito po kasi ano yun eh, nangungunghan ng mga gamit. At this, as a very young age, to sustain my vices. Until one time, a policeman caught me and because of that, I have re realized that I was not a good example to my relatives, friends, and neighbors. This was the turning point of my life. I decided to go to the church because my reputation was ruined at our place. I wanted to escape the people that labeled me that labeled me as a snatcher and I really wanted to go somewhere else, a place where people do not know my background so that they will not judge me. It was then, Pastor Jeter Manalo, the assistant of Shepherd's Fold, former Shepherd's Fold Baptist Church, uh, now is Shield of Faith Baptist Church under Pastor DJ Manalo, shared to me the gospel, a simple plan of salvation. I repented of my sin and accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior last January 7, 2007. I was baptized on the 10th day of June, year 2007. I began, I, be, I began to grow in the grace of the Lord. It's very hard to change, but through God's grace and His mercy, He changed me. Not only that, when I first joined to the camp meeting, the last night of this event, God called me to surrender my life to be a full-time worker in His ministry. He gave me a passion in sharing his gospel and burden to the lost souls. Then I enrolled to, to Timothy Bible Institute and graduated in Fundamental Baptist College for Asia at the year 2015. And now I'm doing a mission work here Barangay Kalumay East Valenzuela City. Going three years this coming August. God is good. Amen? God is so great in our life. I'm thankful because of His power. He molded me from being a bad into a good sheep. I just want to close with the verse. James 2 verse 5. The Bible says, God chosen the poor things of this world, rich in faith. And tears of the kingdom, which he had promised to them that love him. The Lord has used this wonderful verse to touch and challenge my life. I hope that my testimony must be a blessing. That's all. Thank you, Bergen Bible Baptist Church. Thank you, Pastor Sam, for the privilege that you have given to me. Uh, Amen. That was a blessing. We praise and thank God for the words of life that was shared tonight as we look at why uh, Christ Jesus sacrificed himself for us because of his great compassion, his great commission, and he'll be our great companion. And we praise the Lord for the wonderful testimony that God is still in the business of saving souls and he can change uh, a life transform it from being nothing into something uh, be able to serve uh, the one true living God and we praise and thank God for um, this young man for surrendering to the Lord uh, to be used by him in that part of uh, this world and we will be having um, a love offering for our speaker tonight so if you are uh, blessed and you are burdened to help him as he is just starting um, a mission work, he's uh, doing it by faith. You can give um, online to our uh, church or um, this coming Sunday. You can come here in person and uh, drop it off in our um, offering plates or mail it in our church. Whatever you can do to help uh, the work of the Lord in that place in Kanumai Valenzuela. So we praise and thank God for what we've heard tonight. And let's have a word of prayer as we um, 
close our service tonight. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for um, your word that we've heard tonight. Thank you, Lord, that you endured the sufferings of the cross because you saw fit, Lord, to look uh, forward in time that there is joy in the cross because you knew, Father, that's the only way that man could ever be forgiven of their sins and can be saved. Thank you, Lord, that you um, yielded your will to the Father's will and you did not turn your back uh, from us in spite of uh, the shame, in spite of um, the agony, in spite of the emotional, physical, mental, and most of all spiritual suffering that you experience, Lord. But thank you, Lord Jesus, for your unconditional and everlasting love to us. Thank you, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and we are forever grateful for the love of God that we had experienced, the love of God that, we, uh, that you've shown, Lord, on the cross. And we praise you, Lord, that we can remember that, not just uh, a tradition every year or annually, but we can uh, have it really fresh in our hearts Knowing, Lord, that um, the world sees the cross as foolishness, but unto us who are saved, who are the uh, children of God, is the power of God unto salvation. So help us, Lord, to share this wonderful message of the cross and guide us tonight. Uh, give us a good night rest and dismiss us with thy blessing. And help us to be excited as we look forward this weekend, as we celebrate your uh, resurrection and Make known to the whole world, Lord, that we are serving a risen Savior. And we praise you, Lord, for who you are and what you've done. In Christ's name we ask and pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. And we'll see you next time.